Do you have a friend or family member who has ADHD? If they're anything like me, they probably struggle a lot with daily tasks. But the good news is you can help them. If you're interested in learning how, this video is for you because I'm going to share with you five ways that you can help your friend with ADHD. The first way that you can help your friend is assist with time management. People with ADHD struggle pretty badly with time management. One of the things that Debbie, my wife, has done is she's introduced me to digital calendars. She showed me how to set them up. She showed me how to schedule meetings and also how to put in specific reminders. It took me a little getting used to at first because I'm not the best with computer stuff, but once I figured out how to, how to do it, and input all of this stuff, it's been a massive game changer. It's been really helpful. Thanks, Debbie. You can do the same by helping your friends set up a digital calendar to remind them of important dates and deadlines. Also, sometimes large tasks can be a big challenge for people with ADHD. We don't know where to start, and oftentimes that can lead to procrastination, which is never good. You can help your friend with ADHD by encouraging them to take a large task and breaking it down into smaller, more manageable parts. So what you can do is choose a monster task that's been giving your buddy a tough time and work with them on breaking that task down. A good example of this for me is decorating my office for Christmas. Rather than focus on decorating my entire office, I break it down into manageable tasks. The first thing I do is I focus on setting up my Christmas tree. After that, I get it all decorated and I make sure that the skirt goes underneath it. Next, I focus on setting up the stockings. Once the stockings are in the right order, I move over to the coffee bar and I set the coffee bar up with beautiful decorations. One particular decoration that I'm very proud of is a Santa inside a Christmas themed train. It's like one of those old 1800 steam engines. Eventually I complete all of these smaller tasks and my office is decorated beautifully for Christmas. The second way you can help your friend with ADHD is encourage breaks during long activities. People with ADHD focus best when they're given breaks. For me, breaks keep me attentive and focused. And the other benefit is it prevents me from getting frustrated too easily. A lot of times people with ADHD experience setbacks or a series of setbacks. For neurotypical people, they might look at these setbacks as pretty easy obstacles to overcome, nothing too big to worry about. But for someone with ADHD, these tasks can seem very, very stressful, extremely frustrating to the point where we might have an outburst or possibly even stop doing the task altogether. If you're working on a long project or activity with someone who has ADHD, encourage taking short, regular breaks to help maintain focus. I think the Pomodoro technique works really well with these kind of situations, especially for people with ADHD. If you're not familiar with the Pomodoro technique, one of the core principles with it is basically taking a five minute break every 25 minutes. This is what I recommend using, just a basic kitchen stopwatch. So I'm not sure if you can see, but this one's pretty cool because it has Chinese characters on it. Interesting story about the introduction of the Pomodoro technique for me. Um, my wife, Debbie, was doing research and found out about this technique. So in order to introduce it to me, she got me a, a really cool steampunk style hourglass. Actually, this wasn't an hourglass. This was a half hour glass. And the idea was, I would flip it over, the sand would start pouring out, and then when the sand was empty, it would be time for a break. This turned out to be a horrible way to start the Pomodoro technique because rather than helping me focus, the half hour glass did the complete opposite. All I could do instead of getting my work done was watch the hourglass because I was so, I was worried. When, when is this thing gonna be done? When is it gonna be finished? Basically, I got no work done, and instead all I did was consistently glance to the side to see where the hourglass was. So that's when we made the switch to this stopwatch. And this is important because you just set the, the timer for 25 minutes and then when it's up, it'll beep. And then you know, it's time for your break. You need your breaks. The third way that you can help your friend with ADHD is provide clear and concise information. One of the most common challenges people with ADHD face is communicating effectively. We have so many things bouncing around and swirling in our brain, it can make it really hard to focus on what people are saying. All of the constant noise that people with ADHD have in our brains can be very, very distracting. And comprehending what people are talking about can sometimes be a challenge. Sometimes when a person is talking to me, especially if they're long-winded, I will not pick up on everything that they're saying. 
I might pick up on some of it or even most of it. But the problem is, is if you miss a critical piece of information, you've missed the entire point of what they're talking about or the important part of what they were talking about. When communicating with your friend who has ADHD, try to be clear, concise, and direct. Avoid long-winded explanations and provide the information in a structured way. I mean, you might even want to resort to bullet points because that can also be helpful. So being concise, direct, and using that point structure is really important because it helps people with ADHD understand what you're saying, but also remember it for later. The other thing that's important is if you're talking to somebody who has ADHD, be aware of signs of confusion. If you're talking to them and you see that their face is a little bit perplexed, or maybe they're tending to get a little bit distracted and start looking around to different things, it might be time for a quick check-in. People with ADHD, they'll be honest with you and they'll say, no, I don't understand. And I think what's really important here is to be patient and to repeat what it is that you were saying, possibly in a more concise way, in a more clear or direct fashion. But being patient and being, and, and not allowing yourself to be frustrated because you have to repeat something one time, two times, several times, I think that's really, really helpful for people who have ADHD. The fourth way that you can help your friend with ADHD is engage in physical activity. Engaging in physical activity can be immensely beneficial for managing symptoms of ADHD. The truth is movement actually makes our brains work better. When I'm moving, my brain works better. It helps us focus, problem solve, and generate all kinds of great ideas. What works really well for me is short jogs or really quick walks. Sometimes I'll also engage in an activity that just requires physical effort or movement. For example, cleaning my apartment, moving things from one room to another and keeping things organized. My wife, Debbie, loves it when I engage in this kind of physical activity because it's extremely productive and she won't have to do the cleaning. My wife, Debbie, doesn't really like to do cleaning. Sorry, Debbie. I still love you. Invite your friend for a walk or a jog or a sport that they enjoy. Not only will this help in managing your friend's ADHD symptoms, but it'll also give you opportunities to hang out and spend time together. It's a win-win. A win for you, a win for them. The fifth way that you can help your friend with ADHD is create a distraction-free environment. If your friend needs to complete an important task, offer to help create a distraction-free environment. This could be helping them remove a bunch of clutter from their workspace, giving them some noise-canceling headphones to use, helping them to unplug their electronic devices so that they're not distracted by them. This was really important for me because before, my workspace was not designed for me to be successful in. Once I changed it, my productivity increased dramatically. I was able to get so much more stuff done in a fraction of the time. I got rid of all clutter. So I went through my workspace and asked myself, do I need this item? If not, I got rid of it. Freeing my workspace from clutter alleviated a lot of potential distractions. The second thing I did is I provided myself with a designated space for my fidget and gadget tools. Here's an example of one fidget tool that I keep very close with me almost at all times. And if I find myself getting a little bit fidgety, I'll just pick this little bad boy up and start squeezing it and it really, really helps me focus. Another thing I did was reposition my desk so that it now faces a wall. Before, I had my desk facing a window. Anytime there was any movement outside, anytime somebody walked by, anytime I heard a noise, I was constantly distracted. I was distracted by everything that was going on outside. That led me to fall behind on some of my tasks. I started to get stressed, felt uncomfortable, felt more and more pressure. That's no way to live. So by repositioning my desk up against a wall, I eliminated a bunch of distractions. One final way that you can help your friend with ADHD is by being consistently supportive. What I mean by that is if you commit to doing something with your friend, make sure that you follow through with it. Your consistency provides a stable and predictable friendship, and that is extremely beneficial for people with ADHD. So what are some ways that you're helping your friends with ADHD? Leave it in the comments below to help and inspire others. A good example of this for me is decorating my Christmas office. <laughs> <laughs> God dang.